Joining us first on CNBC is the chairman of the President's Council on Economic Advisors, Kevin Hassett. Kevin, it's good to have you back this morning. Oh, good to see you. It's great to be here again, yeah. Walk sure. us through how you get to this number. And, I mean, you're talking 5% wage growth. We haven't seen that for an awfully long time. Well, I mean, it, it, exactly how you get the 4,000, you know, there are three or four different models that we go into in the report. But the background problem is really just this, that we find a clear structural break in the relationship between corporate profits in the U.S. and wages. If you go back and look at the past, it used to be if you get 1% corporate profit growth, then wage growth would go up by 1% as well. But now that's almost disconnected completely. Over the last eight years, corporate profit growth has been 11%, but real wage growth has been almost nothing at all, a little more than half a percent a year. And so we've been studying why that disconnect has happened. And the basic point is that the profits are now in Ireland. Since we're the highest corporate tax place on earth, U.S. corporations are locating their activity and their profits offshore. That's increasing the demand for workers over there, reducing the demand for workers over here, and you know, keeping wage growth from going up along with the welfare of the corporations. And so the president Kevin, has put out a tax plan that is going to reconnect corporate profits and wages by encouraging people to locate here. It's not like corporations have struggled to make profits over the last few years. In fact, we've seen them doing quite well, even with that overseas cash, and that hasn't translated mm -hmm. into higher wages. So why would that Correct. change under your plan? Oh, yeah, sure. So the point is that right now we're a 35 percent rate. It's almost 40 if you count state and local taxes. And uh, U.S. corporations then have a decision. Should I locate in Ireland where I'm paying a little more than 10 percent or here in the U.S. where I'm paying 40 percent? And they're locating their profits overseas. And so you see it in the bottom line. You see in the earnings statement that they got lots of earnings, but they're not so much here. They're leaving most of them over there and they're using the money to pay workers over there, not workers over here. And so well, the question is, what happens if we go down to 20 percent? You know, if we go down to 20 percent, then they're going to bring that activity back here, increase the demand for workers here and drive up wages as well. Well, wouldn't they also drive up buybacks and, and dividends? And yes, maybe we'll see some capital investment in, in machinery and new plants and maybe a little bit in wages, too. But it's mm -hmm. really hard to find an economist, including the nonpartisan tax policy center, which I know you don't agree with, <laughs> that actually thinks $4,000 for working household income boost as a result of this corporate tax cut is realistic. Uh, I just disagree with that. If you go and look at our report, we cite all sorts of different studies, use their analysis to predict what would happen if we were to cut the rate to 20 and then estimate a wage effect. In fact, even today, it wasn't cited in our report because it didn't come out to today. There's a new study at Boston University by Larry Kotlikoff, a famous economist there, where he says that the uh, plan as proposed would increase GDP growth by 3 to 5 percent and wages by 4 to 7 percent, which is exactly the range that we're finding when we model it. Kevin, looking at this from the position of your, your average middle class American, we've seen the charts that show that the share of total U.S. income of the bottom 90 percent has shrunk while the top 10 percent has really grown. There's the point you made about uh, corporate profits uh, being disconnected from the working. You see all this and somehow it seems weird that the solution is going to be cutting corporate taxes. How do you make that argument to the middle class? Well, I think that what's going on right now is that we've made a tax code or constructed a tax code that has told businesses to create the jobs overseas. If you create the job overseas, then we're not going to tax you very much at all. But if you create the job here, we're going to tax the heck out of you. And I think every American understands that if we're chasing employers offshore, then that can't be good for America's workers. And so it's a, and, but, but then this is not a theory. You know, I emphasize once again that there's a large literature, all of it cited in our report, where people have looked at, well, other countries have cut their corporate rate. What happened to workers there? You know, what happened to their corporate tax revenue? And you can see that everything is very consistent with the story that the president's been saying, that if we cut corporate taxes, we lure businesses back here and the businesses drive up wages. Uh, we, you're talking about going 35 to 20 on the statutory rate, but we know the effective rate is not quite that high. What would the effective rate do under this plan? Any idea? Oh, sure. There, you know, there's lots of different measures of the effective rate. There's the effective average rate, the effective marginal rate. And I think that if you call it the user cost of capital, the cost of capital is going to drop 
by about 11 percent. It depends on parameter assumptions, but that's about how much it goes down. And then that would drive capital spending higher. That would lead to economic growth and, and higher wages. And again, uh, there are lots of different ways to get to the wage effect. You can do it with general equilibrium modeling. You can do it with the macro time series literature. Uh, and you can do it with the cost of capital and investment literature. And all of those basically lead to the same point, that you get a wage effect about like this. But you know, I know that there are going to be economists who say, well, maybe it's $2,000. There are going to be other economists who say, well, maybe it's $9,000. There's going to be a public debate about that. But there's nobody that's saying that it's zero. Right. The fact is that right now we're chasing businesses overseas. It's not rocket science. It's just economics. If you do that, you reduce the demand for labor. You reduce wages here. It shouldn't be in dispute. And then there's Larry Summers, the former Treasury Secretary of the U.S., Kevin, who I know mm -hmm. you guys have gone back and forth with a little on the economics, and he's on the other side. But I did ask mm -hmm. him about this stat, the 4,000, because President Trump mm -hmm. mentioned it in a speech to truckers as a mm -hmm. result of the corporate tax rate. Here's Summers' analysis of that analysis. The idea that somehow some lack of incentive is what's causing corporations not to invest. By the way, corporation, corporate profits, they're after tax. They're at record highs. So the idea that this is going to produce a $4,000 uh, increase in wages, I think it's an absurdity. You know, it says it's an absurdity. Well, it's hard to respond to, to something where he says it's an absurdity, but he doesn't say why. And I can tell you that he doesn't say why because he doesn't know why, because it's not an absurdity. And it's not an absurdity because there's this big literature that we cite that shows that you get an effect like that that looks at what happened in other countries. When they lowered their rate, what happened to the workers of those countries? The fact is that under the Obama administration, where Larry Summers worked, we had about the weakest wage growth you're ever going to see. And especially, we had wage growth that was ridiculously small compared to the profit growth that we saw. And so I wonder what the theory is. What's the theory that says that we could have an economy where the corporations are doing great, but wages aren't, in a way that's unprecedented, other than what we're talking about? I'd love to see the alternative Kevin theory, but instead we're just getting ad hominem attacks. Kevin, what's the proper role of tax policy in encouraging companies to invest in their employees' education as a way to boost wage growth over time? We haven't had a mm -hmm. lot of conversation about that. I mean, corporate tax cut, yes, all the, all the companies around here want that. But what about what's going to make the American worker more valuable? Hey, you know, that's a fantastic question because really, if you think about it, Higher wages come from either more capital spending or more human capital. So if we invest in our workers, make them uh, more productive, either with education or on the job training, then that should drive up wages. And we've certainly underperformed in that. Uh, and if we give workers more machines to, uh, to use at work, then that'll drive up their productivity and wages as well. And I think that you know, there are lots of ideas that uh, people have been studying lately about trying to increase uh, employer investment and on-the-job training, uh, to get our schools better, and all of that stuff for sure can have a long-run positive effect on wages as well. Kevin, we know that the administration has said the corporate rate is one of the elements of this package that's non-negotiable. Uh, he chose to emphasize it in Harrisburg. Uh, you're talking about it here with us. Can you envision a scenario in which corporate is sliced off into its own legislation? You know, I'm, I'm not an expert on, on politics, and, and I'm not a vote counter. I'm reminded of the old economist joke that there are three types of economists, those who can count and those who can't. And I guess I... I guess if you understand the joke, I'm in the, in the latter. So I'm not a vote counter. I'm not a political <laughs> handicapper. But I can tell you that if we get this bill through, it'll be great for American workers. But you, you, if, just the corporate part. I guess I'm wondering, can we evaluate corporate as a powerful tool that will raise household wages absent any, any other elements of personal or even repatriation? I think that there are lots of pieces of the puzzle and they're all important. Don't forget on the individual side that there are going to be improved incentives to work hard, which is very important because more labor input gives them more output. And there's also going to be changes in the tax of small businesses, which is a big share of corporate or of business activity here in the U.S. And so corporate is a big deal. It has a big effect, as we show in our study this week. But the other side is important as well if it's done correctly. So just on your study that, that you're talking about and the impact on workers, Kevin, you do admit that it has a bigger effect in terms of the household income boost on wealthier Americans, right? I mean, in, according to your study, average income, 83000 would see that 4000 to $9,000 boost, but medium incomes of 59000 would see an increase of three to 7000 So how does this not 
oh, help I, the wealthier just, Americans yeah, let more. Yeah, let me let yeah let me clarify that the in those calculations that you're citing, what we're doing is we're going from a literature that tells us what the percentage change in wage growth is given the change in the corporate tax. And in the calculations that we did, we apply it both to the median income, which is about 59,000, and to the average. And since we're doing a percentage change on two different numbers, then, then it's the same percentage change, but you get a smaller number if you start with a lower income. So, that's, so it's not a concession about distributional things. We're applying the same percentage change to different points in the income distribution. And by the way, we document that calculation with a study that looked at the impact of corporate taxes on all the different uh, places in the income distribution and found that they were about the same, that it helps uh, low-wage workers and high-wage workers alike. Uh, Tax Policy Center, uh, call your office. Uh, Kevin, <laughs> thanks. Please come back. I'm sure we'll hear from them, yeah. <laughs> Kevin Hassett uh, joining us from the White House. Thanks, Kevin. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.